everybody. In this video, we're going to learn about adding and subtracting numbers. So again, I'm going to take my notebook and I'm just going to start up top by writing my title. So we're going to be adding. And subtracting numbers. Now at home, again, I do also recommend you put the date in. So I would maybe write the date right here or at the top, just somewhere, just to help you stay organized so that you remember when you actually watch this or um, which week the material was from, for instance. So that could be really helpful too. Um, so you definitely want your title and you want ideally a date or maybe, you know, what week you're learning this in and so on. Uh, I also recommend when you do your notes, starting each subject on a new page. I know some students like to save paper, and I do agree with that, so they'll maybe continue it underneath another topic. Um, but if you find that too confusing, just flip to the next side or the next sheet and start your new topic up top. So today we're going to be talking about adding and subtracting whole numbers. And again, hopefully this will be a review for you guys, but if not, that's okay. Take some good notes like we're going to do here. So what I write down, you want to make sure you write down. You can also write down extra. So if you find that you, know, you need to fill in some gaps or add some more notes along the way, definitely do that too. Okay, so just a couple key words here first before we start. So our first key word is a sum. So maybe we'll just write some definitions here. And the word sum is the answer to an addition problem. You can also think of it as well um, as the total, right? So oftentimes the sum is also the total for talking about an application problem. An addend is just a number that is being added. So as a simple example, let's say you were adding five plus three to get eight. Well, then these here are your add-ins. This here is your sum. Okay, so it's your answer. So let's do a couple of examples. So let's say I want to add um, the numbers 47 and 512. So typically what we do is we add vertically. Again, if you're really good at doing arithmetic in your head, then that's fine if you have some different strategies. Um, but I'm gonna show you the most common strategies that we're gonna use. Um, and for us, again, typically that means we're going to add vertically. And you also want to make sure that you line up by place value. Um, so you want your place values that are the same place value to line up vertically above each other. Um, so think of this as lining up um, from the right. Now, it really doesn't matter which number you put on the top or the bottom here. Um, a lot of times people like to put the bigger number on top, but you're going to get the same answer. So you can either write it as 47 plus 512, or if you prefer to write it as 512 plus 47, the nice thing with addition is you get the same answer. So whatever works for you. And you want to remember that we add starting on the right. So we're gonna add columns here. If you find that you make a lot of mistakes, what you can always do is use like a light pencil or a different color, just kind of those columns nice and organized. So I sometimes I find making vertical lines, particularly if I have a very long addition problem, is helpful just to keep those columns nice in order. So here, I'll start with this one. Seven plus two is gonna be nine. 
four plus one is going to be five. And then if I just have a five, I can bring that down. On the right, you get the same answer. Two plus seven is also nine. One plus four is five. Five. Okay, let's do another example. So maybe I want to add, uh, let's see, how about 697 plus 1,874. Now, again, we're going to add vertically. So I'm going to line up by place value, which really means that you're going to line up based on the right. So kind of working right to left here. Same thing when we add. doesn't matter what you put first. I tend to like my bigger numbers on top, so I'm going to do it that way this time. I'm just going to make sure I give myself some room here. If you find it helpful, you can just make some little vertical lines for yourself in between. I like to use like a lighter color when I do that, just so it doesn't distract me too much. This helps me stay organized. The other thing you can do, although we didn't do it in the last one, is if there's ever a gap, you can always insert a zero there. Again, if that helps you to stay organized. Um, by attaching a zero, it's not going to change the value of our answer. So here, seven plus four is 11. Now this time, you're gonna see something called carrying, um, which is what happens when you have a value that is more than 10. So again, hopefully this is review for you, but if not, just make sure to follow along carefully. So here, seven plus four is 11. So we put the one down from 11 in the ones position and we carry the tens. So I carry the one from the 10. Now I add again. So one plus seven is eight. And then eight plus nine is going to be 17. So again, I put the seven down in the ones position and I carry the one 17. So we're carrying the tens position. Here, one plus eight is nine. And then nine plus six is 15. So again, I put five for the ones position. I carry the tens position. One plus one is two, plus zero is still two. So 2,571 is going to be my final answer. All right, and let's just do one more example. All right, why don't we add more than just two values this time? Let's do, how about 20,504 plus 17,009 plus 9,020 plus, how about we do? So let's do something a little bit harder. Okay, so just a side note, carrying it's, this idea right here. All right, so I'm gonna do my number work over here because it's a much longer number. I wanna make sure I have enough space. So let's see, I have two, three, five, eight, four. And then I have seven, T, nine, nine, nine. Now be careful, I'm lining up on the right. So nine, two, zero, oh, and then five. And again, if you find it helpful, particularly for these harder problems, you may just want to draw those vertical lines. So you say organize, that's all they're for. And then I'm going to start on the right, working left. So I have a four, a nine, a zero, and now, when we're adding, we can actually add in any order we want to. So I'm going to do the 4 plus 4 is 8 first, and then plus 9 is going to give me 17. So I put my 7, I carry my 1. So again, we always carry the tens position. Here, 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 9 again is 18, plus 2 is 20, plus 5 is 25. So I put 5, and I carry the 2, the tens position. Here, two plus five is seven, plus nine is going to be 16. So I put the six, carry the one. 
here, let's see, I have a one and a nine is gonna give me 10. And then seven and three also give me 10. So I have 20 here. So I put the zero, three, two, and then two plus two plus one is five. Now, again, I didn't do it here because I use my columns to stay organized, but you can always attach or fill in any gaps with zeros if you find that helpful. Okay, so again, that idea of carrying when you're little, it's just really carrying that position over when we're adding. All right, so I have some key properties I do want to talk about for a second. So we're still under the overall heading of adding and subtracting, but there are some important properties here that we do want to talk about. So the first property is the addition property of zero. And basically what it says, and you can, you know, kind of read more formally in your text, but what it says is that if we add, so adding with zero, not change the sum, okay? Which I think everybody knows, right? So for instance, five, plus zero is still five. Or if I wanna write the other way, zero plus five is also still five. So we can add with zero and it doesn't change anything. This is also as a side note, sometimes called the identity property. Um, for addition as well. And that's because adding zero doesn't change the identity of the original number. So you may hear it as the addition property of zero. You may also hear it as the identity property for addition. And they both mean the same thing. All right, so the next one is the commutative property of addition. And I've actually been using this already today. Um, and what it says is that it really doesn't matter the order in which you add, you get the same answer. So changing the order of the addition will not This sum. So for instance, six plus two is equal to eight, and two plus six is also equal to eight. So we can add in whatever order we want, and the answer is not going to get changed. And our third one here is the associative property of addition. And what this says is that changing the grouping of the add-ins, so the numbers being added, does not change, again, the sum. So for example, let's say I'm going to bring in parentheses here. So maybe I'm going to add one plus two plus three. Well, in the first way, remember when we have things in parentheses, we have to do that first. So one plus two gets solved first. And that's going to give us three. So I end up with three plus three, which is six. 
Now, if I regroup them, maybe I have the parentheses around the second two numbers instead. Well, we still would do the parentheses first. Two plus three is five, but one plus five is still six. So addition is really, really nice. This does not work for everything. So this is actually not gonna work for subtraction. Um, but with addition, it's nice because it really doesn't matter the order we add. It doesn't matter how we group things. So you can group things whatever is easiest for you. And that's why in the last example, for instance, the last couple of examples, you know, I decided, sorry for this example here, to put the bigger number on top because that was easier for me. And that's totally fine because the commutative property says that I can change the order. And the associative property says that I can regroup things uh, and do it as, as whatever's easiest for me. So let's do one more example on this. So maybe I have a string of digits and I want to add, and I can add vertically too, but these numbers are pretty small. So you can probably do this mostly mentally in your head. Um, and what we can do is we can just regroup things. So notice, for instance, that I have an 11 and a 9. Now an 11 and a 9 is easy for me to add mentally because 11 plus 9 is 20. So I can just regroup that, kind of rearrange everything using the commutative and associative properties and put that together right away, that is 20, right? And then I can also maybe do, now my brain may work differently than yours. So you may be trying to group these together. My brain is saying, oh, let me group five and the three together. because Those are both kind of small numbers and that's gonna give me eight. And then maybe just mentally, I bring that 10 down per second. And then for me, the easiest things to do next is to group that 20 and 10 is 30. And then I can quickly do 30 plus eight and get 38. So those two properties really just allow us to rearrange, to reorganize, regroup however we want to for addition to make it easiest for us. So you should feel free to do that as well here. And again, you may regroup differently than I did. So you may do like the 10 plus five first and say, well, that's 15 and maybe get 35 plus three instead. So, and that's okay, it's whatever's easiest for you. Okay, so we were talking about addition for a bit and now we're gonna go ahead and move on to subtraction. So a couple more keywords here. So we have that word difference. And the difference is the answer um, to a subtraction problem. So another keyword, just like um, some difference is a big keyword for subtraction here. All right, I'm gonna actually do an example and do a couple more definitions. So let's say we have the example, um, eight minus three equals five, okay? So five would be the difference here. And then we actually have different terms. Instead of using the same term like we did for the addition problems where everything was called an add-in, we have different terms for whichever number comes first and whichever number is being subtracted. So the eight here is called the minuend, and the three is called the subtrahend. Okay. So your minuend is the number that you're starting with. Your subtrahend is what you are subtracting, the number being subtracted. Okay. Um, and again, honestly, I'm not going to use those terms in our lecture. They're really used very, very infrequently, uh, but they are good terms to know just as you're reading through the text or you know, going through assignments so that you recognize those terms. Um, but realistically, we don't really use them too often. 
Um, the nice thing is too, as a little side note here, is that we can check subtraction with addition. So for instance, if I'm checking my subtraction here, well, what we could do is I could do three plus five and make sure that it is actually eight, right? So I can check all my answers um, by using addition as well. So they are directly related um, to one another. So let's just do one kind of easy example here. So maybe I do something like 20 minus eight. And again, we can do this one mentally. 20 minus eight is going to be 12. And then to check it, we can check eight plus 12 and make sure it is actually 20. Couple other quick examples. If you subtract the same number with itself, you do in fact get zero. And I suppose you could check this as well, right? If we check this 20 plus zero is still 20. And if you subtract a number uh, with zero, you also get that same number. Okay, so just remembering about some zero rules there with subtraction as well. All right, so let's formally define those. All right, so there's actually two of them that really work together. So the difference of a number and itself is zero. So this is the example we just did above, 20 minus 20 would be zero. And the difference, remember difference is a subtraction problem, of a number and zero is the same number as the original. Sorry, this symbol right here also means number, um, not just hashtag. So for example, if I take 20 and subtract zero with it, then my answer is just the original. Okay, so let's do a few more examples with subtracting here. All right, so maybe I have the number 897 minus 542. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that subtraction does not have unitive and associative properties. So what this means is that you cannot change the order or read as you like. So whatever order your subtraction problem is given in, you have to stay in that order. So I have to put the 897 first and subtract it with 500 and, uh, 502, excuse me. You're still gonna line up the same way. So I'm not gonna rewrite those directions, but you're still gonna line up just like you would for addition with the same place values. And then we're going to go ahead and subtract from the right to left. So seven minus two is five. Nine minus four is also five. Eight minus five is three. So 
Sometimes with subtraction, you may have to also borrow, just like we kind of had that carrying idea. So let's try another example. Maybe I have 518 minus uh, 489. So I'm going to stay in order and just line everything up like I did with addition. Okay. And just don't forget, sometimes we have to borrow. So we have to borrow. Again, we're using tens here. So I try to do eight minus nine and I can't do it. Eight is not big enough, right? It's not going to be one. You can't subtract backwards. So eight minus nine is not big enough. So what I need to do is I need to borrow. So I go over only one space at a time and I take one. So I'm gonna take one from here. So that one becomes a zero. And then I bring that one back over. So this eight actually becomes an 18. Now you can either write it like this if you're good at doing subtraction, or if that's too tricky, then just cross it out and rewrite it as 18, whatever is easier for you. So now I can do 18 minus nine, which is nine. I cannot do zero minus eight. Zero is too small. So I go over one spot. I borrow one unit from the five, make it a four. And then that zero is gonna get a little one added on front. So zero becomes a 10 here. 10 minus eight is two. Four minus four is zero. So if you wanna put that down initially, you can, but we don't need leading zeros. So our answer here is just 29. Okay. So borrowing is this idea right here where we're taking from the next digit over. Okay, let's do another example. I'm going to do 8,054 minus 4,902. So I'm gonna line everything up first. Just staying organized and giving yourself enough space is actually probably one of the most important things. A lot of students make mistakes just because they're being messy or they're trying to write their answer on a tiny scrap of paper or something like that. So stay nice and organized here. Now I start right to left. So I do four minus two, which is just two. So if you can subtract, you just subtract. You don't always have to borrow. Here, Five minus eight, I cannot do. Five is too small. Now I go to borrow the next spot over, but I don't have anything there. I have a zero. So I have to go one more spot over. Now, whenever you're borrowing, you work backwards one little place at a time. So the eight becomes a seven, and then this first zero becomes the 10. Now I can take from the 10, make it a nine, and my five here becomes the 15 I need. So when we borrow, you can't jump. You have to go one spot at a time. 15 minus eight is going to be seven. Nine minus nine is zero. And seven minus four is three. So I have 3,072. Now let's actually do a quick check here as well. So when I check, I'm just gonna go ahead and add these last two values to make sure that it works. So I would take that 4,902, add it with a 3,072. I get four, 15 carry the one, 10 carry the one, eight. And I can see that it does actually match my original value. So it does check out. And you can check any of your subtraction problems. So I'm not gonna check any more of them. I'll just check that one to show you. And I wanna do one more example here. So let's do 17,000 minus 5,406. All right, so first thing is to line everything up. Now, again, if you want to, you can always insert any zeros if you have missing values that may be helpful for you. When you're subtracting, though, uh, with whole numbers, your bigger number does need to be on top. So it should be given to you in the correct order um, so that you can line everything up like this. 
All right, now in this case, I'm gonna try to subtract and I have to do a lot of borrowing. So I try to do zero minus six and I can't do that. I need to borrow. I go to the next digit and it's still a zero. Next digit is still zero. And then finally I get to a seven. So I'm gonna take the seven and make it a six. And then I have to work backwards. So this first zero becomes a 10. Now I can borrow from this 10, make it a nine, and my next zero becomes a 10. Now I borrow from this 10, make it a nine, and the next zero becomes a 10. So you're gonna notice that when you're borrowing like this and you have a lot of zeros, those middle zeros become nines. Because we do have to borrow one spot at a time. Now 10 minus six is four. Nine minus eight is one. Nine minus four is five. Six minus five is one. One minus zero is one. So I do get 11,500 for my solution there.